It's very interesting. It's almost like when blockchain was first kind of coming into fruition and there was a lot of blockchain use cases that some people would argue didn't necessarily need blockchain and some that were fantastic examples. Uh, there was one theoretical DAO scenario that I did want to ask you about. Obviously, 2020 and forward was the year of the vaccine versus non-vaccine debate. debate. Pfizer has a market cap of 315 billion. Theoretically, based on the fact that crypto market cap is around 2 trillion at present, theoretically, could we see a DAO that could take over Pfizer and kind of shut down this vaccine, anti-vaccine uh, debate that we have going on now? How does the DAO shut it down? What's your, what's your thinking? If they accumulate Pfizer, for example, as one of yeah. the leading suppliers around the world, they could choose to stop all rollouts of Pfizer they could choose to halt production, uh, and that would kind of create a slight supply chain disruption. Look, I mean, the question is, is can DAOs be used for other means? Yes. I mean, that's what the Constitution DAO idea was, right? You can coalesce a group of people super quick because of the network effects of being, you know, in this kind of Web3 internet world and move pools of capital around for certain reasons. I mean, there's a DAO trying to buy an NBA team. There's a DAO trying to buy you know, golf clubs. There's, the, you know, so yes, it can be used for all sorts of things and it will be used for nefarious things too, because how do you regulate the damn things? You know, if you want to sue a DAO for doing something, let's say corporate takeover activity, how do you sue a DAO? We haven't gone through that yet. Um, we also haven't gone through what a DAO means in mergers and acquisitions, you know, if, Let's say an equity has a DAO attached to it, which some entities do. Well, what happens if somebody tries to buy the equity? What happens to the DAO? So I don't know. There's a whole bunch of stuff that can happen with this. And this could be the year to solve it out. I think what's interesting as well when it comes to political structures, I used to live in Malta, which is a very small island in the Mediterranean. I know you're based in Cayman Islands. These kind of smaller incubator countries also could be quite interesting for adoption of a political structure DAO. What's your thoughts on that? I think political structure DAOs are interesting. Again, we don't yet know how well DAOs actually kind of distribute power amongst a group of people, whether it makes it more democratic or not, because we've seen a lot of the DAO structures have VCs in them who have more votes. So I'm not sure, but I do think DAO structures and tokenized DAO structures can work for municipalities small countries, small governments in a more effective way. I mean, here we are on the Cayman Islands, and I'm sure same with Malta, it's a small town that's a country. And what happens is politicians become really small town. You know, they still end up, as opposed to caring about, you know, <clears throat> something that's really truly good for the nation, they end up wanting to win the votes over fighting over a neighbor's fence. And it becomes a ridiculous situation. Um, so I think, you know, there are different structures that would definitely help for voting and uh, for a more democratic society. But it's not clear yet that DAOs have done that either. OK, so it's a watch the space. Because also Shapeshift last year coming into the kind of DAO ecosystem, was that something that you were watching and thinking, you know, maybe I would invest in these these large companies that I've been following for a while. I trust the, the corporate structure. Now they've moved into DAOs, I do have a bit more reassurance uh, that the model will kind of continue on in a positive way. Again, you don't know. It depends what the community decides, right? You don't. You don't get the choice. Now, if you're if you're backing a particular person and you share their sense of vision, then generally speaking, it may it should remain aligned for a period of time. Not always, right? People drift. Like Google, do no evil didn't really last very long. But um, but with a DAO, it depends what the community does. I mean, the DAO can pivot immediately and can turn it into a political organization, which you didn't want. So, uh, you know, I don't think there's any panacea. There's no perfect solution. And I don't think DAOs are the answer to everything. I just think they're really interesting for some things, particularly when the hive mind um, can produce better results, like investments. I think brilliant ideas. Um, you know, we've been. I was talking to somebody today about a research DAO. Brilliant idea. I think there'll be DAOs based around scientific research and all sorts of stuff. Whether you could fund it, um, give it a a kind of sense of direction, and and let it establish itself. Really interesting.
Fantastic. So now moving on, because I think I've picked your brains enough on DAOs, we do have to start now with the OG of the space, which is Bitcoin, and just what your expectations are for 2022, because 2021 was a year very exciting for people in the crypto space when it comes to people that have been watching and advocating Bitcoin for, for a few years. What are you expecting for Bitcoin when it comes to potentially more balance sheets to add Bitcoin this year? Well, Bitcoin needs a shot in the arm, essentially, um, from network effects, because we're seeing less activity than we are elsewhere. So you need to drive new participants into the space. One thing I do know is institutions are coming into the space, but I think it's switching a little bit from the direct Bitcoin access to VC access and hedge fund access and other ways. So I do think we'll see some more balance sheet stuff, but the problem is the accounting laws still don't help. So for gap accounting in the US particular, um, they have to mark it to worse price. And so you just, it, it's a real nightmare on a balance sheet. So until that gets resolved, we won't see many more corporations do it. Flip side, we're seeing all the banks building crypto businesses, <clears throat> and of which Bitcoin is the, um, the predominant one, Bitcoin and ETH again. So I do think the banks will have them not in their balance sheets, essentially, but, but in their trading books. Um, and I think we will see more pension funds and institutional investors. And I think this year might the, be the year of the sovereign wealth fund. You know, it would be really surprising if, if Dubai, Abu Dhabi, Q8, uh, I know, I think Singapore already has it on their balance sheet. Saudi, I think there's a whole bunch of these that I think will start doing it. They've already been doing VC investments in the space. I think they'll start coming into the space in terms of physical ownership of Bitcoin. And for people that are watching that they think, oh, that sounds great, but what would a sovereign wealth fund for Bitcoin, what would that actually do to, for example, the price and also just for that next stage of adoption and even acceptance across regions? Well, I think it's the, it's the, it's the real sign of acceptance. Um, in terms of adoption, yes, it, it allows other pension funds to own it other large pools of capital. Um, now, the, the key thing about these sovereign wealth funds is they have gigantic um, assets. So even a half a percent weight is, you know, billions and billions and billions of dollars. So when they come into the space, it's going to be meaningful and they'll be in it forever. Um, so that's something to really keep an eye on because when that starts happening at scale, it'll move the price for sure. And it will drive pension funds to come in and kind of other players. I am going to pick your brain on price, but I'm going to wait till later on in the conversation because I do want to start our chat going on the YouTube and get everyone to to comment what they think your price prediction for one Bitcoin by the end of the year is going to be. And we're going to oh, even, shout out some know. of the predictions. <laughs> along the way. You have some time to think about it as well. Um, one prediction that we are seeing as well, Bitcoin spot futures ETF, obviously last year with the Bitcoin futures, that was slightly correlated to all-time high price. Are you expecting to see Bitcoin spot futures come along? They haven't given us a hint that it is. And it's bizarre because what they've done, you know, if, if Gens's idea was to protect the little guy, he's completely screwed them by giving them a futures contract that trades at a dis discount. And so suddenly the ETF now doesn't track the price of Bitcoin. Same with the um, same with the GPC trust. So they should do something, but we've not heard any noise that they will. <clears throat> so I'm not sure. Meanwhile, every other country is launching ETFs. I think India's just launched an ETF on Bitcoin. Canada, there's, there's um, ETPs in Germany. So they're coming anyway, whether the US gets there or not. Everywhere else will get them.